Hey there, welcome to Virtual Art Studio. My name is Hannah Gumbo and I am an artist and a lover of all things culture and color and fun. And so together we are going to learn a little bit about Courrier de Mardi Gras or to run Mardi Gras, which is a Cajun Creole traditional Mardi Gras celebration. Um, it's not like where you see the floats and the beads. This is something a little bit different. Um, so we're going to learn about it, create a chicken, because it's all about the chicken for Courrier de Mardi Gras. We're going to create some chicken art together, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, first, I want to tell you that this video is a part of the Acadiana Center for the Arts Virtual Art Studio. And what is the Virtual Art Studio? It is a special place where artists present all types of different videos. Um, we come together in visual art, dance, music, movement, and so, so, so much more. Um, you can enjoy these videos online from anywhere, from your classroom, from your house. Um, so keep tuning in and seeing other videos that artists are gonna make for you. Um, again, let's talk a little bit about Mardi Gras. We are gonna make some chicken art, and I'll give you a little taste of what that is. This is a chicken that is on the run. Look at his legs. He is not sitting there just waiting for somebody to get him. He is running away. Um, if you notice the materials that have his beak and his feet and other elements, you see some stripes and some red shiny material. I actually used a McDonald's fry container to make my little chicken. Um, this was not used, so it was not all greasy, but I was able to not just use, you know, art supplies that I got from an art store or a craft store, but just things that I had around the house and things that I wanted to reuse. And that's really special for this project, especially because when we're gonna learn about Mardi Gras together, especially the rural country traditional Mardi Gras that we celebrate in Louisiana, we talk a lot about reusing whatever materials we have around. So you can see this fun costume that I have on, right? This is a top. And a lot of the what you see in this type of Mardi Gras is this fringing. And this is just taking old material and cutting it and continuing to layer it and add it to create a whole new costume. So we're gonna be thinking about that and when we do this art project together, we don't have to have brand new construction paper. We can be using old cereal boxes and yeah, maybe even a fry container and maybe some leftover fabric. We could look around and we all have different things that we're gonna bring into this to make our chicken unique, which I think is really fun. Um, so first, before we start making our chicken art, let's slow it down. Let's learn about what Mardi Gras is and who I am as an artist. I'm gonna talk a little bit about Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras is a holiday. It's also known as Fat Tuesday that we celebrate here in Louisiana. And it's a part of our culture. It's a part of our roots as Cajun and Creole people. Um, but it's one of those holidays that we celebrate a little bit differently depending on where we live. And so if you live in New Orleans, you may go to see big floats. There may be a lot of parades. They may be in the nighttime, in the daytime. Um, beads, catching beads is a really big part of this. If you're in Baton Rouge, you may go to parades and see a lot of pink flamingos. And you may even see people dancing with uh, lawn mowers and a lot of different funny, crazy things. If you're over in Lafayette, there may be more parades, but you may see um, different things that are being flown, thrown from the floats. So those are all different um, types of Mardi Gras. And in those different areas, you'll see a lot of three colors. Um, you'll see a lot of purple, green, and gold. But there's another level to Mardi Gras that happens in the country areas of our state. Um, and these rural communities, mainly in Mamu, Basile, Eunice, Church Point, and these areas, they celebrate a special type of Mardi Gras that we call Courrier de Mardi Gras. And that's French for running Fat Tuesday. And so that run, that Mardi Gras run, is a time to hang out with your friends and family and dress in costume and go on an adventure. And you're going on an adventure to get something really specific. You are getting all the ingredients to make a gumbo. 
And so you dress up in these costumes and you go from house to house and you ask for rice and peppers and all the different things you're gonna need to make your gumbo. But when you ask for a chicken, the neighbors or the houses that you go to, they're gonna tell you, you can have a chicken, but you gotta catch it first. And so Mardi Gras day, we're running around trying to catch the chicken so that we can all eat a nice chicken and sausage gumbo at the end of our celebration. And so today we're gonna to be making some chicken art and we're gonna be thinking about how we can incorporate different aspects of this Mardi Gras tradition into our artwork. So I love the costuming that comes out for Mardi Gras. And just like the celebrations are a little unique with Corriere de Mardi Gras in the rural communities, so are the costuming. So typically when people were dressing up for this Mardi Gras celebration, they were gonna be in costumes so that no one can tell who they are. So they were gonna have a mask, they were gonna have long sleeves and long pants to cover up anything that would give away who they were. And they wanted their costume to be really colorful and made up of a lot of cool materials. And again, this is because you can use anything that you have lying around. You can go, you don't have to go to the fabric store, the art store, you can just use whatever you have. So a lot of times the masks were made out of the same material that they used on their windows of their house, a screen material. And a lot of times the clothes that they sewed together were just old clothes that they weren't using anymore. So when we make our chicken, we wanna think about using things we have around our house. And we may want to add in the technique of fringing. That's when we take a paper or a fabric and we cut it at the edge so it flows in the wind. So I'll show you that maybe we want to add that aspect to our chicken today. For me as an artist, I have been very interested in showcasing or showing some of the culture that we have in Louisiana through the drawings and the paintings that I create. And I actually live in Eunice where we celebrate Courier de Mardi Gras. So I make a lot of different posters and art prints and stickers and patches that celebrate this Mardi Gras. A lot of times I'll add in colors, the Mardi Gras colors, but also red and pink and blue and things that aren't in just the regular gold, green and purple because if we're taking materials from around the house, we may not just have those colors. We may have all the colors of the rainbow. And no matter what I incorporate into my Mardi Gras art, I always usually put the chicken as the most important part. So you can see that as um, the slides of my artwork are going across your screen, that there's usually a chicken hidden somewhere in there. And he's usually running because he doesn't want to be caught. He doesn't want to become part of the gumbo. He's running away. So today we're going to be thinking about that when we create our chicken. So to get started, this is a mixed media project. What does that mean? That means we can use all types of different tools, but I will tell you what you definitely need. You need some type of paper, um, ideally, you would have at least three full sheets of paper. It could be white paper, it could be colored paper. Um, you're going to need something to write with. It could be a Sharpie, another type of marker, a pencil or a pen, it's up to you. Something to cut with and something to glue. In addition to these materials, we want various papers and materials from around the house. So I showed you this earlier but I'm utilizing packaging for french fries. And this was given to us um, like along with our ardor. So this did not have fries in it, but we just asked for an extra container to craft with and to make art with. Um, if you use something that food has been on, it may be slightly greasy and not the best idea, but just look for the parts that are still clean and able to be used. One of the things that I like to do this with is boxes that food comes in because this doesn't have any food on it. The things are individually packaged on the inside and when you flip it over, you get a nice surface area of paper to cut and use. 
So we can use the back of cereal boxes, um, of any kind of cookies or anything that you think would be a good fit. Um, you can use these types of boxes on the plain side, or actually you can use it on the color side and find these areas of nice printed color. You can also use different colorful paper that you have in your, um, in your art or craft supplies. This can be construction paper or colored computer paper, but you can also find this kind of thing just within the mail, like maybe a colored envelope that's going into the garbage um, or anything like that. So we want a variety of paper. And if we use white paper, we'd probably want some um, markers or colored pencils or something to add color, but it's not necessary. And these tools that you see here. So to begin this drawing, we're going to be creating a basic shape like you see here. And we're actually going to be using our hand as sort of a guide, like you can see. But we're going to take this shape when we create it together in a minute and we're going to cut it out and it's going to act as a pattern. When we cut out shapes like this, we can use it as a stencil to create as many of the same shape as we want. So this can create as many um, chickens as we would like. After we do this, we can use the variety of materials that we talked about to create our own type of chicken. So I'll show you a quick example before we get started on ours together. You can see how using this shape of paper, I was able to cut out a cardboard chicken. And this is just used from recycling. I made all kinds of crazy marks on it. I did a nice outline. And this is going to act as the base for my chicken. So I can move him however I want, but I'm going to put him towards the center. And then all these different pieces that I'm going to cut out, you can see a lot of this is recycled. This was a graham cracker box. I can put together to create a chicken of my very own. And I purposefully am using the side of the box that you can see the words and the pictures just to show you some of the variety. And since none of my shapes are glued down yet, I want to show you how your chicken can look a little bit different depending on how you cut your shapes and glue them. So I can use my wing and I can have it up here in the air. I can have it down here. Do you see how that sort of changes the way that it looks? I can flip it and have a more solid shape. I could paint this or I could have it really busy with a pattern. I can have the mouth and all these elements of the chicken's face attached like this, or I can have them kind of separated. And this is kind of cool because it looks almost like there is an action happening, almost like the chicken is in flight and moving. And he's moving so much that these things are even separating from his head. Same thing with his legs. I could put his legs just like this and it looks like he's standing. But I can also move his legs just like that to where it looks like he's running. So you can play around with the shapes and that's why I like creating a pattern first and then cutting it out because it allows us to move all the components of our chicken and decide on the best colors and patterns and shapes before we completely glue it down. To get started, we're going to first create the pattern of the body of our chicken. So to do that, we need at least one sheet of paper, any color. I'm going with just a white sheet of paper and I'm turning that paper um, towards the long way to create this shape. You can draw this without using your hand, but if you find that it's helpful, you can go ahead and use your hand as a guide. So you see a lot of times where people put their hand flat and trace to create different birds like a turkey for Thanksgiving. We're going to kind of keep that concept, but we're not going to trace going all the way near our fingers. We're going to trace and just use our fingers as a guide. So we want to end up with something similar to this. So you can see that these finger lines don't go all the way down, right? 
This is gonna be the head of our chicken, and these are gonna be the feathers. So together, we're gonna take whatever hand we're not drawing with, and we're gonna create this type of shape. So it's kinda like a fist, but we want our knuckles to show with our fingers bent, and we want our thumb out nice like this. And just where our wrist is, that's gonna be where the bottom of our chicken is. So I'll put that right here in the middle of our paper. Now remember, we're gonna be cutting this out so it doesn't have to be directly in the middle. And we don't want our wrist in here, so I'm gonna stop when I get to either edge of where my hand ends. So I'm gonna start, remember I'm not touching my hand, I'm just using it as a guide. I think I want my chicken's head to come up a little higher. And then just like my knuckles, one, two, three, four, and stop. I'm gonna pull this out and I wanna connect these, but I wanna do it nice and round. Perfect. If you have something like this, you are in good shape. At this point, we are going to take our scissors and we're gonna cut this out. If you want, you can even write the word front to remind yourself this is the direction that you want your turkey, your chicken, to go. So go ahead and cut it out and you're gonna end up with something like this. I'll go ahead and cut mine out while you cut yours out. You can cut directly on the line or you can cut a little bit in or out. Remember, this is only gonna be our guide. So now you see I have two to choose from if I'd like. With this leftover paper, I want you to create the wing shape. I would start with any edge of your paper and create a nice big U shape that comes down and connects with the edge of the paper. And you can see that this is the letter U, just sideways. You can make it as big as you want. You can make the edges slightly curved if you want. But this is gonna be my pattern for the wing. And the other shape that we cut out is gonna be the pattern for the base of our chicken. Just like this. Okay, at this point, we have our template for our front and for our wing of our chicken. Now you get to decide whatever materials you want to create. Um, you can use another sheet of paper, whether that be colored paper, or you can take a sheet of white paper and you can add different materials to give it a nice colorful look. So one idea is to take an additional piece of paper and to create any kind of pattern you want with say oil pastels. So you can make all types of mark making. I love oil pastels because they have a nice, vibrant, beautiful color that they leave behind. And I may fill up an entire paper with a cool drawing or cool technique like this and decide that I'm going to use this to cut my chicken's body or wing out of. So if I decide to use the wing, I would set this down here and I would take my template and I would decide where I want this pattern to show. So since this is a flat edge and this is a flat edge, I'm gonna line it up here and since I have my oil, pa oil pastels out, I'm gonna use that to create my tracing line. You could also do this with a pencil. And remember, this is not about perfection, so even if it gets a little messy, that's kind of part of the fun. And then I can go ahead and cut this out. And I can go right where my line is, or I can kind of make a fun little squiggly line maybe if I want to. And now, instead of having just a plain wing, I have a nice oil pastel wing that I can add to my chicken. 
And I'll do the same thing with the body. I can either put this over another sheet of paper and trace, or I can do a variety of techniques, whatever I decide to do, to make my chicken nice and colorful. I'll show you real quick this chicken that I created. You can see that instead of the wing being made out of oil pastels, that I actually did a whole paper with oil pastels and then used my template for my body of my chicken and used that material to cut that out. This is the paper that I used. So you can see I went a little bit over the edges, which is fine. And then I cut out the shape and glued it on a plain white sheet of paper. And then I took my wing template and I cut it out of a black sheet of paper and attached it here. And I really like the way that the black is against this really colorful oil pastel. And then both of these are just glued to a white sheet of paper where I drew in the legs, the elements of the face, and I continued some lines around here. So this is a really cool technique that you can use. And then you can use your same template and try out a new technique. Technique for designing your chicken could be to use the leftover paper that you use to cut out the template for the body and the wing. And I have my wing shape here. I'm just gonna put this edge to edge and trace. Perfect. And I'm going to do a different technique on this wing. I'm going to take various strips of colorful paper. I'm going to cut them into nice little strips. And just like you saw on my costume, I'm going to do a fringing technique. And so to do that, you take one of your strips and a pair of scissors, and you do a series of cuts close together towards the bottom. Now I'm not going all the way to the top because if I do that, I cut the whole thing off. I'm just going about halfway up with my scissors. You can go really close together or you can go further apart. And that's gonna create a fringe just like you saw on my costume. Pretty cool, huh? So for this technique, I want several strips of different color paper already cut to be fringed. And then I want some type of glue I'm going to determine what the top and what the bottom of my wing is. This is the bottom and notice I haven't cut it out yet. And I'm going to do just a little bit of glue towards the bottom and lay my first strip down. Now you see it's slightly bigger, that's okay. Then I would glue my next color and we want to switch from color to color. So I would add glue to the top here and lay that next one down. Glue this one, lay this one down, and keep going all the way through till it's completely covered. Once that is glued, you could turn it over and completely cut it out and you're gonna end up with a nice wing just like this. I decided to only glue this front portion so that this wing can still move. And then I went back and I added some marker lines on it, but you can see all of this is fringe made of paper that I layered. And then once it was dry, I cut out my shape so that you can see it and it looks really beautiful. combine all the things we've learned and create a chicken together. So using my template for my front, I can cut out another piece of paper that should be a similar size. In this case, I cut out a piece of cardboard. Then we're going to use our wing template and we're going to cut out another type of paper. We can color it. I used oil pastels in this case. And then we can either cut out the different components for the legs and the mouth, or we can draw it. So in this case, we would glue the body down, glue 
the wing down. And then we can add our beak and our legs and anything else that we want to. So for the eye, I like to create this U shape with a nice separate U shape, either out of paper or out of a marker to create the eye being closed. I like to create the beak, which is a shape going up, a shape going down. These two lines almost create a triangle, but instead of going a flat line across, I'm gonna connect them like this to make the beak. I'm gonna come up towards the top of the head and do some nice detailing here. Maybe I add a little bit down here. You can color these in or you can make them with paper, color them in with color pencils or markers. Then I wanna do a straight line towards the front, straight line towards the back. These are gonna be his legs like he's running. And then just like we did for the beak, it's gonna be almost like a triangle. I'm gonna create this shape and go one, two, three, four for the legs. We're gonna do the opposite this way. One, two, three, there we go. And this shows our chicken nice movement. He's running. I can add additional things. Maybe I wanna add little lines. Maybe I wanna add some stars. Maybe I wanna add a message like Courier de Mardi Gras. I definitely wanna sign my name somewhere. And maybe I even, after I glue this all down, wanna come back with some color and add color to different parts of my drawing. What else would you add to this? Would you have the wing coming up right here? Or would you have it up like that? Maybe you don't want to draw on a sheet of paper. Maybe you want to cut everything out of paper and arrange it together before you glue it down. You can even do multiple wings and have one in the back, one in the front. I like making things out of paper because you can move it around and experiment with all types of different things. Maybe I even want to add more fringe to the bottom. It's really fun to play around and to see what you can create. I'll show you some of my finished pieces here. For this one, I went ahead and drew some lines around it. For this one, I did not add fringe to the wing. We added fringe to the back of the chicken. And we have messaging. We have some instruments. This was glued just on a piece of cardboard. And then this final example, just like I showed you at the beginning, was used with a McDonald's fry container, some colorful paper, and again, I went ahead and added some words with markers. So using all these different ideas, you can make a chicken of your very own. I am so glad that we got to work together to talk about different materials and this Cajun Creole Mardi Gras known as Courier de Mardi Gras, or to run Fat Tuesday. And I hope that when you think about Mardi Gras, you don't just think about those you know, three colors, the gold, the green, and the uh, purple. I hope you think about all the different colors that come from cutting up fabrics. I hope you think about the colors of a chicken and a big silver pot used to make the gumbo. And I also hope that when you look around your house and you find things um, lying around that maybe are gonna go into the recycling or to the garbage that maybe you can think about turning it into some art, whether that's chicken, Mardi Gras art, or something completely different. I love um, the different things, like I said, the costuming that comes with Mardi Gras and the fringe that you see, and maybe using that to showcase in our artwork, like a chicken. I love creating a Mardi Gras chicken and just letting ourselves go crazy with the materials. 
Maybe some of us want to use paint. Maybe some of us want to use oil pastel like we see here. I love that we are making our chickens running, right? And showing little movement lines, coming up with all these different cool things that we're bringing together to represent such a cool holiday. Um, so no matter how you make your chicken, no matter how you celebrate Mardi Gras, I hope that you've learned something today and had a little bit of fun. And remember, um, thanks for creating with us and you can come back each and every week and check out more of Virtual Art Studio. We've got dance, we've got movement, we've got visual art, and you can access it all here online from wherever you're at. So thanks so much and see you for the next one.